NMC just released this draft a few days ago and national exit test or next is here and it changes everything. Hello everyone, my name is Anuj Pachel. I'm a final year MBBS student at Government Medical College Nagpur. I scored an all-day rank of 885 in NEET 2018. And in this period, I'll be covering every single point related to next and how to actually study for it, what are the resources that you'll be using. And before we go ahead, let me just tell you that this video is a distillation of all the points that I've gathered from top-level faculties, from NEET PG toppers, from INI CT toppers, from the current residents, my senior, and a lot of different things that, that I've picked up along the course course of this journey. Why should you listen to me? Because I'm most likely your senior and second of all, of all the subjects that I've cleared in MBBS, only two of them I did not have a distinction, that is physiology and PSM. I've studied quite a lot while managing every single thing. I've given a ton of quizzes and as a person who talks with you every Sunday at 10 a.m., I feel like it's kind of my responsibility to address so many emails and questions that I've been getting about next. Chalo, with that out of the way, let us start with the first point, the exam pattern. Now straight away, you can go and read the draft. This will give you much more information than I can give you right over here. But in short, next is going to be a two-phased exam. Next, step one and next step two just like the usmle step one two three next is going to be following the similar pattern in fact it is also proposed that in the coming years next is going to be shifting to a three-part pattern that is next one two and three let us talk about next one next one or national exit test one is going to be conducted the final year theory university examinations will be absolutely replaced by next and the practicals of final year will be still there so what will happen you will be a final year student just like i am right now but instead of giving the university exam you'll give next one after the end of internship there's something called as the next two this will be a pass or fail exam there will be no score course given in next two and this will be judging everything that you've learned in internship and all the practical skills which is kind of what it's supposed to be like. What is the eligibility? Every person who has been in a recognized institute of medical science can give this examination and depending on their scores they can apply to various PG courses. For next one the pattern of examination is very simple. It has got six different subjects spread across six days. Each subject is given their own separate paper which is a very beneficial thing to any student. Why is it so you ask me? Since you are attempting so many different questions there is a lot of room for error and they have already proposed that 60% of the questions which are going to be coming in next are going to be the normal easy ones. So any person who has studied a little bit in MBBS, attended the postings, will be able to solve them. The remaining 20% questions are going to be somewhat mid-level and the last 10-20% are going to be only for those people who actually want to get a good rank and get selected into their dream medical college for pursuing their PG. Now this next one is very important because if you don't qualify next one, if you don't score 50% in all of the different subjects, well, what will happen then is that you won't be allowed to give internship. Just after next one, there will be a supplementary exam for next one, which which will allow you to rectify your mistake, to rectify your score and score 50% again and that will allow you to enter internship. The more marks you score in next one, it will be the determining factor for you into selecting your college for PG. What this notice has not told is that which batch is going to give next first and what are the provisional dates for the exam with respect to the year. They have only given the mention the date, so January, December, but they haven't mentioned the year. What my estimate and according to a lot of resources that I found while researching for this video is that most likely 19 batch is going to be giving next for the first time. That's scary and that's huge but it's really nothing to be worried about. So in short, if you're in 19, 20, 21, 22 and all the batches to come, you are most likely going to appear for next. And for 2018 batch, it is 50-50. Hiya na, to many next ho sakti hai. So be prepared for both of them, I would say. Personally, on my channel, I'll be sharing my entire journey for preparation of either neat PG or next through my vlogs, through videos such as this one. So please make sure that you hit the subscribe button if you want to be updated on all the videos that I post. Chalo, now let's get on to how to actually study for national exit test. There are, first of all, I would like to go on some universal points that all of the students of MBBS should be following no matter next or need pg or whatever first point this was told by a topper of need pg and he said basically that you are actually studying to treat the patients you're not studying to pass an exam you're not studying to qualify an exam you're actually studying to treat patients you change your way of approach towards study and you actually imagine every patient everything that you read as a clinical scenario and you will be understanding it into a depth which you never ever thought before second this point was actually bought by dr deepak marwa sir and he actually told us that the diseases are the same the treatment is the same the management is same and the investigations are the same what do you mean by that no matter which exam they take they're always going to select the same points to ask the questions from number three notes are everything not a lot of teachers say this but a lot of the toppers of neat pg and i city have have repeated this tens and hundreds of times that their notes were the only thing that actually got them through the examination notes are something which you have to make whenever you're watching lectures from marrow or whatever app you got and you have to revise these notes over and over and over again and only and only then will you be able to get all of that information from that notes into your head and whenever a question appears in front of you you will be able to extract that information notes are everything i repeat once again Number four, daily studying is absolutely important because you cannot even miss a single day. You have to study tiny, tiny, thoda baut every single day. Otherwise, you won't be getting anywhere. So let's say that you have a posting at nine. So just wake up at 7.30 or eight and just start to read anything about the case that you're going to present today. Let's say that you're going to the surgery OPD and there is a case of breast lump. So read something about the breast lump and whenever you go there, try to, you know, understand whatever the case is and daily studying is very, very important. No matter what you do, even if it's your birthday or whatever, just open the book, sit for 10, 15 minutes and close it 
it but you should always always be in touch of your books because you're actually going to be a doctor your work actually matters you're going to be saving patients one day so you cannot possibly think of not touching your books for extended period of time number five read books standard books are everything no matter how many videos you watch it is not a replacement for reading standard books now take this point with a pinch of salt because it might happen that you might not have enough time for reading standard books so only and only if that is the case let's say you're 19 batch and you've got examination in like uh, 11 or 12 months you don't actually have enough time to read all the standard books of final year mbbs but i still urge you to read only the important topics from the standard books even though you have watched the videos as i go through the year wise approach i'll be highlighting what are the books that you should be reading in each year so make sure that you watch the video till the end the last point is make the most use of posting so 18 batch has got all the postings done so 19 20 21 22 all the batches in mbbs you have to make the most of your postings whenever you go into the opd whenever you go into the ward or the ot make sure that you actually understand whatever the case is present over there let's say that you go into the medicine ward you see that is a patient of anemia now try to find out what are the causes of anemia through the history and examination itself because this is going to be very very important for your practical examination which you naturally have to give after next one if you don't have good ward skills if you don't have enough clinical skills examination skills you will be straight up failed in mbbs exams mostly you have to learn what is the history taking what is the examination how to write the performer and what are the points you should be eliciting in a specific case with respect to the positive history negative history past history present history whatever if you just narrow this down enough the treatment management all of that it will take care of itself the viva can go into any direction but most important point is that if you got the history examination all of this basic stuff right you will most likely pass the exam that will only happen if you actually pay attention to your seniors in the ward pay attention to the procedures which are being done and go ahead and inquisitively ask questions to the people who are present in the ward postings are the crux of your mbbs do not miss them do not think that they are a replacement for anything because you are again coming back to the first point you are actually studying to treat patients not to not to qualify an exam exam secondary ho jayegi exam but tum skills to develop karo tum samjho to kya ho raha hai disease mein number 6 this is a very important point these are all the resources all the resources that you're going to be using for preparation some of these are paid some of these are free but this is just my personal opinion on these resources and if you don't like them well i can't do anything about it number one resource for all the students who are preparing for neat pg right now neat pg or next whatever be it is marrow marrow is is the definitive treatment for this disease of neat pg or next when i walk into the library of my own gmc nagpur then i see that around 8 to 9 out of 10 people are going to be just sitting down and reading and reading about through marrow notes or watching videos or solving grant tests or giving question banks through marrow so marrow is something which every student is going to use eventually now and then for next specifically i highly encourage you to give the subject wise tests which are present in the marrow app so you just open the app you go to the test section and go to subject wise and there you will be given medicine ki test surgery pediatrics obs gyne all of that so what will happen is that in your next examination the paper pattern is that in one particular chunk you will be giving medicine ke 180 questions and pediatrics is 60 questions right instead of giving the gts which are the grand test you actually start working with the subject wise test because in the end you have to give subject wise test in next you don't have to give a grand test which is a mixture of all the different 19 subjects you have to give the subject wise test which is just focus on one single subject so this is a very very important tip that i wanted to highlight over here second of all if you have enough time the lectures of all the different subjects are good it took me a lot of time and incredible amount of effort to just complete the medicine part of marrow itself and after that i was totally exhausted from watching any other lectures I actually hated watching lectures after i completed medicine because i feel like itna sab kuch karne ke baad mera ek subject hua so for medicine if you feel like that's vast you can go for different sources like dams bhatia or whatever but for all the other subjects especially for surgery for obs and gynae for radiology for orthopedics all of these subjects are taught so very well they are so to the point so precise that even if you read the notes once you will be able to understand everything related to that subject the question bank is the gold standard resource of marrow i feel like agar tum kuch bhi nahi kar rahe so you should at least solve the question bank from marrow take the plan b which has the question bank and then just start solving the question bank and start making a mistake book start bookmarking questions and start revising them whenever you get the time whenever you give a test you also give a predicted rank uh, which will tell you ki tumhara rank kitna aane wala out of so many people have given the test which is very very important because the most amount of people who take any test on a platform is marrow maybe dam cbt comes a little bit closer but overall it's going to be marrow and after completing 13 to 1400 marrow modules including the videos as well as the question bank i'm pretty much sure that no other resource comes even close to this amazing app the next resource i want you all to use is pathoma pathoma is a lecture series by dr husain sattar sir none of this is sponsored by the way and the way he explains pathology you will understand it right then and there there are i think around 28 or 29 lectures you can watch it in 2x and 3x and complete pathology entirely i would highly recommend you instead of using marrow for pathology i would personally suggest you use pathoma for pathology because of the crispiness of the lectures in patho dr ilam ma'am also teaches very nicely but i personally found husain sir's lecture to be much much more easier to understand next is first aid let me elaborate more first aid is a book used for usmle step 1 preparation dr rohan khandelwal sir encourages to use first aid quite a lot because he actually cleared usmle using that book i personally also use first aid sometimes whenever i have to revise complicated things when i don't have enough time to spend on marrow notes because first aid is the condensation it is the distillation of all the important topics 
into one single book. So who should use first aid? Because it's a very dense book. So I think it, it is this big, but it's actually not. It is extremely dense. You will take at least 10 to 20 minutes to just go through two or three pages. And that is the amount of content which is present on every single page. So if you can imagine like if it's a thousand page book, it will take you quite a lot of time to finish it. So the people who are currently in first and second year, those are the only people I think you should be using first aid for preparation. So yes, those were all the three sources. Number one, Marrow, second, Pathoma, third, first aid. Itna use karoge. I think everything should be fine. You should be able to revise everything. And yes, mental stress thoda kam rahega. Okay, now let us get on to the year wise approach. But before we just go ahead, let me just tell you this. No matter what, tum apne dimaag ko jagay pe rakho. Just keep your mind in line and keep your focus on the, your target. Because no matter what, you are, you are going to put your effort and you are going to give the best in your examination. Jo hona hai, to wo hoke rahega. So you cannot stop it. So just relax a bit, chill out, take it easy and just start reading with a positive attitude. So the first thing is if you are in third year, how will you prepare for this? Third year or final year that would say. So currently 19 batch will be just going into the final year. They are currently in third year giving their university exams. First of all, time is less, but there is no need to panic. Complete third year ENT and ophthalmology from Maro because these are your core papers which are going to be present in next. Ophthalm can be a bit difficult because no matter how much you study ophthalm, I don't know where they take out the questions from because I personally don't tend to get a lot of ophthalmological questions right. Focus on university exams right now because most of you guys will be having university exams very very soon or if not you are actually undergoing them. Because in the end you have to actually pass university exam of third year and you can just you cannot just panic and just start studying for next while completely ignoring UT and failing third year MBBS by itself. I think there are around 800 or so question banks in Maro and if you do at least three or four of them in around 365 days you are going to be completing every single one of them. As soon as the university theory exams is over not the practicals as soon as the theory is over you will be given at least a one or two week gap for the practicals and practicals are usually very very easy. Complete your practical preparation in four or five days and I think that is more than enough to prepare for third year practicals if you have studied well in your prelims. If you haven't then you are pretty much ducked. Start with around nine to ten lectures a day and you will be completing all the final year subjects within a span of three to four months. Even if you include medicine it's not going to be a huge problem. I know nine or ten lectures per day is insane. You will take at least five or six hours to complete nine or ten videos because I personally have watched more than 20 videos a day. When I was doing medicine it was very very difficult for me to sit in the library from eight in the morning to eight or nine in the night. So it was difficult. I know it myself but I feel like personally if you have so less of a time you can't waste it at all. At least nine to ten lectures a day for three to four months. Three or four months ka tumhara parishram rahega as I call it and after you are done with that your final year MBBS should be over. So medicine, surgery, obstetrics, pediatrics, radio, derma, psyche, orthopedics and one thing I forgot is that. Utilize the weekends to the maximum because I know that you will be having theory classes from nine to five in your college. Most of the colleges will have that so you have to push yourself. It is going to be hard I know it but there is no alternative for you guys. Remember my friends interns are the people who have ten times more work than you. In final year MBBS you just have to go to just have to go to the posting attend a few lectures and that's it. In most of the colleges what will happen is that after the postings are done nobody will even bother to take your lectures because that is what usually happens in GMC Nagpur. The attendance will be manipulated and everything will be done. But interns, interns are the people who actually work in the hospital for so many hours, so many hours they have night, they have day, they have 48 hour duty and so many more things. But still they end up studying and studying and they end up pulling a rank. So who are you? You're just a final year student and you have plenty of time to study a lot. And most of all believe in yourself because see exams are going to be hard, nothing is going to be easy. But if you believe in yourself, you believe ki mein kar paunga, only and only then will you be able to progress and actually do something in your life. If you're being scared and scared, nothing will happen. Now these were all the subjects of final year MBBS. There are also subjects for third year MBBS which you have to revise for next examination that is the ENT and ophthalm which will be placed. And for ENT and ophthalm just use the marrow notes. For associated subjects for first year and second year use pathoma for pathology. For microbiology you might have made notes and pharmacology is the same thing. First year MBBS you can just go ahead and solve the question bank of marrow this will give you all the necessary questions you know whichever topics which you don't absolutely understand you will you can just go ahead and watch the videos for that medicine is very very integrated with physiology surgery is very well integrated with anatomy so you can just go ahead and watch these which books should you read as i said time is low but standard books are not to be replaced the books that you absolutely have to read the important can be important is for surgery you have to use a gold standard book the best one is of course bailey i personally found to be srb much more interesting than bailey so srb is the one i would go for for medicine i would go for bulur because it is very crisp and clear it aligns with the marrow notes perfectly let's move on to the second year approach so let's say that you are in second year mbbs or just starting out with third year mbbs it's one and the same thing pathoma is a must keep in touch with first year subjects is the points you should be following pathoma you have to watch it so that you understand pathology and you have to keep in touch with first year subjects by either reading first aid or revisiting them using question banks of marrow. Second, gold standard books are absolutely to be followed for pathology. You have to read Robbins because it will really, really help you understand everything related to all the diseases. So if you are, let's say, studying gynecology and encounter cervical cancer, you have to go back to pathology and read about it, right? If you uh, encounter colon cancer, you have to go into pathology and read it. So everything in all the subjects 
in the future are going to be related to pathology so you cannot at all take a step for pathology for microbiology the best book that you should be using is shastri i have talked about it in very very detail for pharmacology you can use kate party or shanbagh or govinder sir's review book which is also present in the market your goal should be first maximizing the output of postings that you are going to be posted from second and third year mbbs and second of all at least five to six lectures per day that is the minimum and you have to complete the third year mbbs subjects in second year itself so in second year tumhe teen major subjects to karni hai that is pharmac patho and micro apart from that in third year mbbs ent ophthalm and psm these are the six you have to absolutely complete in second year itself lastly the first year students who are watching this first of all get out of the post neat inertia i coined this term back in 2019 so post neat inertia is basically it is that when you enter a medical college you are already in that neat wala phase ki chala i'm a neat aspirant or you you stop studying basically and that is very very difficult for you to get out of so get out of the post neat inertia and start studying as soon as possible focus on all the practical classes physiology anatomy and biochemistry practicals are so good they are golden absolutely and enjoy your life thoroughly in first year mbbs go party do dance whatever because that is practically the only year where you can you know enjoy without having the stress of studies because that's personally what i found through the last four and a half years standard books are a must for you guys grey's anatomy for anatomy along with bd chaurasia for anatomy ka preparation ganonger gaitan along with ak jain and lastly biochemistry ke liye vasudevan and rajesh sir's notes are going to be absolutely enough for first year by the way if you're finding biochemistry difficult i've got these charts on my website which actually highlight all the pathways interconnected to each other so you can complete the entire part of metabolism by just looking at this one chart there are three such charts available on the website for carbohydrate lipid and protein metabolism so you can just paste them in your wall they are printed so no issues with the handwriting or anything link in the description next in first year mbbs focus 50 50% on university exam as well as next so don't worry about it too much but don't stop doing questions and don't stop reading books concluding thoughts for this entire video that is first of all studying is constant in mbbs when you signed up for mbbs it was not an easy course you knew it you watched all the videos of me studying and studying but still you took this course let me just remind you that not at all a single subject is going to be easy not a single chapter is going to be easy you you will always have to work hard to understand something that is what being a doctor is about that is what becoming a doctor is about and it is not a piece of cake at all you signed up for this and you're going to be becoming a successful doctor one day do not be afraid of exams do not be afraid of anything just keep working hard in the right direction i'm sure you will achieve your dreams like me so all the students who are watching this stay motivated to keep working hard and make sure that you subscribe to my channel for more such amazing beautiful videos and i'll see you in the next video on sunday it's a final i'll catch you in the next one goodbye